Hi there. This is the final segment of Kena Ford and the Secret Journal Mix-Up. If you haven't seen the other segments, you might want to go back and watch them or just jump in where we are. Friday, November 19, 3.30 p.m. Today was the greatest day of my life. I met a famous writer. People clapped for my speech and I found out Tiffany Harris is a liar. And mom let me drink two cups of punch, even though it is loaded with sugar. First, I met a famous writer, Bob Morgan. He has written 10 books. Five books are about Bippo and Pecky. He answered lots of questions from the second grade kids, and he even answered some questions from the parents. Mom was there with her video camera, but she didn't ask any questions. I wrote down Bob Morgan's answers to the questions in the back of my notebook so I wouldn't forget what he said. Next, I gave my speech. Five kids gave speeches, but mine was the longest. I got a little nervous about making a speech in front of kids and grown-ups and a famous guy, but I gave my speech in a loud voice anyway because I would not have been cool if I had gotten scared and run away or something. I did not look at Tiffany for my whole speech because I knew she was not going to like it. My speech was about how I am very lucky to have three best friends. I said, I have a best friend in my class named Linny, a best friend in my building named Eric, and a best friend in my family named Brian. Then after I talked about my three best friends, I told a fable that I made up. It was about Bippo and Pecky, but I also made up this other hippo at the zoo named Skippo. I named him Skippo because I knew Bob Morgan really likes hippo names that rhyme, and I wanted him to like my fable. So anyway, Skippo is mean to the other hippos, and Bippo tries to teach him to be nice. After I said the moral of my fable, I said, The end. People started clapping, so I bowed. Then Ms. Campbell told me, good job, and I could take my seat now. After all the speeches, we had a little party with fruit punch and cake. Addie's mom made the cake, and Addie used icing to make Bippo and Pecky on the cake. Then at the bottom, she wrote, thank you, Bob Morgan, but she ran out of space. So the thank you part was extra big. Bob was a little smarter, and Morgan was all jammed up so you couldn't really read it but I told Daddy it looked really good because I know it is hard writing on cakes. I was having a really fun time at the party because lots of people were telling me they thought my speech was very, very good. And Linny gave me a hug and said I was nice. She said she liked the part of my speech where I said that even though Linny and I have disagreements sometimes, it's okay because we are still very good friends. I was standing beside Linny and eating my cake when Tiffany came over to me. She looked mad. She said, I'm going to tell Linny what you wrote about her in your journal. What are you talking about? Linny asked Tiffany. Kina wrote something mean about you in her journal, Tiffany said. I felt very brave after I gave my speech, and Linny said that yes, even though we had disagreements, we were still friends. I don't care what you say, I told Tiffany. It's a free country. You can say everything you read in my journal. I don't even care. You read Kina's journal? Linny sounded very shocked. I decided to just tell Linny what I wrote before Tiffany could tell her. I wrote that I didn't believe you stayed up all night at your sleepover, I said. I think I wrote it because I was very sad that my dad didn't let me go to the sleepover. I'm sorry. Linny moved her shoulders up and down in the same way that Tiffany does to act like she knows everything. Except when Linny did it, I didn't mind because I knew it meant that she wasn't mad at me. I felt about two million times better in one second. Just then, Tiffany's mom walked over and said she thought I was a good little speaker and that I should always remember to stand up nice and straight when giving a speech. Tiffany's read Kina's journal, Linny said to Mrs. Harris. You should tell her not to read someone's private stuff. Mrs. Harris looked surprised that Linny said that to her. Tiffany certainly did not, she said. I took that diary away from Tiffany as soon as I saw that Kina left it, because Tiffany needed to do her extra workbook pages. 
Tiffany is learning to do third grade math. Then Mrs. Harris turned to me. I'm not sure where I put your diary, but I'll try to remember to look for it. That's okay, I said. I got a new one. Mrs. Harris walked away to go talk to Ms. Campbell. I looked at Tiffany. She didn't look too happy. You lied, Lenny said to her. I played airplane, airplane princess twins for no reason, I said. Why did you lie? Tiffany said she didn't know, and she moved her shoulders up and down. It's not nice to lie, Lenny told her. Then she asked Tiffany if third grade math was hard. Tiffany said it wasn't that hard, but that she didn't like it. Then she just talked to us normally for a few minutes. She didn't say she was sorry about lying, but she didn't say anything else mean. So after Tiffany left, Lenny and I decided that we will ask Tiffany to play with us at recess next week as long as we can play regular games and not the princess kind. Saturday, November 20, 11 a.m. I am at Dad's. I decided to just go ahead and finish writing in this plain old notebook since I am almost done with it. This morning, when Dad came to pick up Brian and me, Mom showed Dad Brian's chart that had three stickers on it already. Dad said, wow, what a beautiful chart. Did you buy that from a professional chart maker? It must have been very expensive. And I told Dad that I was the one who made the chart. Brian only has to get two more stickers. I think he can do it, but if not, I will make him another chart for the next week. Before we left with Dad, Mom made everyone watch the video of my speech. Mom, Brian, and I sat on the couch, and Dad sat in this old rocking chair from Grandma Hapo's. When I started talking about Brian, all of a sudden you could hear this sniffing noise on the video. But you could still hear me talking because I talked loud. Then, when the video was over, Brian said my speech was pretty good. Dad said he thought it was fantastic. Everyone asked me questions about the part of my speech that was about Eric. Mom said the sniffing sound was from her crying because she was proud of Brian and me for being nice people, even if Brian was trying to make her crazy with all his clowning. Then, Brian said Mom's crying sounded like a horse breathing. And Mom said, Brian, better watch out. Friendship, a speech by Keena Ford, dedicated to Bob Morgan. Hello, my name is Keena Ford. I am going to give you a speech that has two parts. The first part is about my three best friends. The second part is going to be a fable. I have three best friends. One of my best friends is named Eric. Eric lives in my building and he goes to this school, except he is in the boy class. Eric and I have been best friends since we were four years old. Eric and I do a lot of projects. One of our projects was making a homework hut out of a big refrigerator box. When I have a problem, Eric tries to help me fix it. He helped me a few weeks ago when I cut off my hair by accident. We tried to make a yarn braid to go where my real braid used to go. And this week he helped me with another problem. The way we fixed the problem might have been against the law, so I won't say what it was, but I will just say thank you, Eric. My next best friend is Linny. Linny is in my class. I like Linny because we play fun games together. I also like her because now that we're a second grade, in second grade, she doesn't get mad about little stuff anymore. If someone tries to make her mad, she just says, so what, and whatever, and stuff like that. I like Linny because we can have disagreements, but then we can still be friends. My other best friend is my big brother, Brian. He is the best big brother in the whole world. He lets me come in his room when he's not busy, and he talks to me about my problems. Sometimes he says mean stuff to tease me, but when I feel sad, he tries to make me feel better. I am so happy that I have a big brother, and I am happy he is not moving to Maryland. He has a beanbag chair. Now it's time for the fable. This fable is called Skippo is Not Nice to Bippo and Pecky. Once upon a time, two best friends named Bippo and Pecky were at the zoo. They are the same Bippo and Pecky from Bob Morgan's book, so I hope it's okay that I used them for my fable. Anyway, Bippo was mad because this mean hippo named Skippo knew a secret about Bippo. 
And Skippo said he would tell Bippo's secret to everybody if Bippo didn't do everything Skippo said. Skippo wanted Bippo to play with him all the time instead of playing with Pecky. Then Pecky got sad. So Bippo told Skippo, you are not the boss of me. Skippo started to tell Bippo's secret, but Bippo sat on him so no one could hear what Skippo had to say. And you didn't know this at the beginning, but Bippo was a lot bigger than Skippo, and that's why he could sit on him. The moral of the fable is that if you want to be someone's friend, you should just be nice. Now you learned a lesson, and you learned about my three best friends. I love you, Bob. The End Answers about Bob Morgan 47 years old Virginia 10 books 2 kids Stay in school Yellow too hard to decide. Mint chocolate chip. Next year, yes. And that is the end of Kena Ford and the Secret Journal Mix-Up. I really love this series of books, so I hope you enjoyed the other two. They are all in a playlist on my channel for chapter books, and each of them also has a playlist. So I hope you enjoyed them. Give me a thumbs up if you like them so I know I'm not the only one out there that thinks that Kena Ford is just the cutest little girl. Ah, so I've enjoyed reading these to you and I hope you enjoyed them as well. See you next time on Stories with Grandma.